Oh, thank you all so, so much for being here. So uh, while we prep for the Wither fight, I guess I will tell you guys a little bit about the live stream for The Cure uh, and why uh, I started this. And kind of like my experiences with cancer, you know, which I have never had, thankfully. Uh, but uh, a very, very good friend of mine named Jake, uh, he passed away back in 2005, uh, my first year of college. Uh, I was out in Clarion at the time when I got when I got notified. It was like finals week too. I remember that. It was like finals week when I got notified uh, that that he he had passed away. Uh, Jake was only about 23, 24 years old at the time. Uh, so you know, with his entire life still ahead of him, and he had a really really rare form of cancer. And ever since then. Ever since then, uh, fighting against cancer has been a, a very, very big passion of mine. I have just wanted to do anything that I possibly can. Well, I fired a lot of arrows. Woo. Um, I've wanted to do anything that I possibly, possibly could uh, to help fight cancer. And it was watching the guys from the Knicks cast, um, you know, back, you know, six years ago now. Uh, do their Race Against Time charity, which is every August, which is also an absolutely amazing uh, charity event. It was it was watching them do that, you know, and, you know, they're small creators. They're just small indie creators, but they're still using their platform to try to make a difference in the world and try to do some good. And so I said to myself, I'm like, you know what? Um, you know, I was on Epic Film Guys at the time. I was like, you know what? There's no reason why we can't do the same thing. And I believe that means we can now update that timer. It is officially day two. Day 250, ladies and gentlemen. And we have smashed the face of the Ender Dragon uh, straight into its body. She is dead. I am victorious. We now have access to the outer end so I can get Elytra so I can finally fly in this world. But being that this is the actual live stream for the cure, we are prepping for that Wither Boss fight. There it is. Right there. Now. Where? God, I'm terrible. Okay. We need to prep for this fight. And we are going to need some assistance with this fight. Because uh, the Wither's a jerk. Uh, so anyway, as I was saying, yeah, my friend Jake had passed away at like 23, 24 years old. And when I saw what the Knicks cast were doing, I was married at the time and my my uh, my mother-in-law at the time was uh, going through cancer. She had lung cancer. And... Uh, it's the same thing as the Twitch password, Dan. At least it should be. Because I changed it to give... Uh, I changed it so G had access to it as well. So yeah, when I saw what they were doing, I was like, we can use this platform. Like, you know, we're Epic Film Guys. We only have a handful of listeners. It's not like we're breaking the bank, you know, with listeners and stuff. But we can bring together other indies... You know, other indie creators, other indie podcasts and stuff, we can bring them together and, like, we can actually make, like, a real tangible difference, you know? And that was kind of where the idea of Livestream for the Cure was born. The first ever Livestream for the Cure was back in 2017. It was a 12-hour event at the time. We just did 12 hours. It was, like, noon to midnight one day. And our goal was to raise $2,500. We did not meet that goal. We actually failed to reach our goal that year. And when time came the next year to be like, are we going to do this again? Are we going to challenge ourselves to do live stream for the cure again? I said, yeah, we're going to double it. We're going to double that goal. So even though we had only raised $1,200 the first year, I said, we're going to go for 5,000 the second year. And it was the second year. Um, very, very, you know, good friends uh, of mine, podcasters, Amazing, amazing people in their own right. Perry and Lindsey Johnson. 
Uh, they had had me on their show at one point, and I'll never forget one of the things that Perry said to me. He called me the Mark Marin of indie podcasting, which is uh, still such a, an amazing honor, you know, that he thought that much of me. You know, and uh, they were gung ho about the event. They loved the event. They wanted to support the event. They wanted to do everything they could uh, to help raise awareness for the event. And then a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks before the event, Perry was diagnosed with uh, stage four esophageal cancer. And I gave them the out and I said, guys, you don't have to be part of this. You guys don't have to do this. You know, you guys don't have to, you guys don't have to, to do this. You've got far, far more important things to do. And they said, no, we're doubly coming on now. Like we want to be there even more now, you know? Uh, so they still were part of the event that year. It was still very important to them to be part of the event. And we ended up raising, we ended up not only exceeding our goal, that year we smashed our goal that year oh i forgot i only have three of these furnaces uh we not only smashed our goal that year uh, but we also ended up raising another just about thousand dollars for perry and Lindsay's uh for perry's medical expenses at the time why do i not have fuel in here god nick be better at the game jeez so yeah it was it was it was just it became even more like like at that point it was like you know it became even more personal you know um and perry perry was part of the event that year perry and Lindsay were both part of the event that year and you know he went through a cycle of where he he fought cancer he was undergoing chemo radiation he got much better he got much better he was feeling much better he actually went back to work uh, and everything else, and then another scan showed that it had spread really, really badly. Uh, and at that point, it became clear that he was fighting a losing battle, and he lost that battle in January of the following year, before we even got to the next year's event. And um, Lindsay came on that year, and you know, she just she closed out the event that year, and she just shared with us Perry's journey. And kind of her journey in, in taking care of him and everything. And, uh, you know, just absolutely, absolutely gutted me, you know, um, for, for, for Perry to have lost that battle. But that only galvanizes me more. And then meeting the amazing people that I've met in this community, you know. Uh, there are so many amazing people in this community that are that are content creators that either are taking part this year or have taken part in years past who have suffered and who have lost loved ones due to cancer. And because of that, it's like every person I meet who has been affected by cancer, which is literally everyone, if you've never had it, you know someone who has a friend, a family member, an acquaintance, somebody in your life has been affected by cancer, you know? And that's why I fight. That's why, you know, it, it, putting on this event, like putting all this stuff together and doing all this stuff, it takes a lot. It definitely takes a lot, but I love the work. Uh, I love the work and I'll never stop doing it because if there can one day be if there can one day be treatment where everybody can be immune to cancer, where everybody can have, everybody's cancer can be treatable through immunotherapy, then that's a future worth fighting for as far as I'm concerned. And that's why we do this. That's why, you know, I know I'm just breaking melons and pumpkins in Minecraft right now and, and beating up silly stuff. We're going to have a lot of silly, just amazing, super good fun over the next three days with just an amazing group of people who have worked really hard to put together great segments to interact with people during their segments with the live chat and all that. I know like a lot of the idea. Oh, dang it. I know like a lot of the ideas that people have for their segments. I'm really, really excited to see uh, for you guys, excuse me, to see uh, a lot of what these creators have come up with because it's going to be so much fun, you know, but I mean, just like, you know, take a moment to just think about that possibility for a moment, you know, the possibility of a future immune to cancer where, where cancer is no longer a thing. Like cancer is no longer that, that dread that we, that we experience nowadays 
when someone gets cancer, you know, where it's treatable, where there's hope to shut it down, where there's hope to stop and, and, and find a way through, you know, and, and, and to, to really, I mean, again, a future immune to cancer. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. You know, and, and I mean, like I said, I, uh, you know, for five years now, this is our sixth year, we've raised over $50,000, 50, you know, 52 and change, you know, uh, last year's event, we raised 19,000 and change. And this year for the first time ever, this year is the first year that it's ever going to be shorter. Codswallop, welcome. Hey, we're all about chaos on live stream for the cure. Chaos is more than welcome here. You know, it's just it 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 always 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 like every time I hear that someone has been diagnosed, every time that I hear that someone's life has been affected by cancer, it galvanizes me that much more. You know, I I just I I want to do whatever I can. I want to play whatever part I can. Dan, can you update that day counter to 250 whenever you get a chance, my friend? Uh, I want to do whatever I can to make a difference in this world and to make a difference in the fight against cancer. You know, and I really, really appreciate every single one of you out there who are here, who are supporting me, who are supporting this event. No matter what reason you're here, if you're here helping us raise awareness, helping us raise money, and not everybody can donate, and that's okay. A lot of the times, I like I get people telling me like, "Oh, I didn't do anything because I couldn't donate." Like, you don't have to be able to donate; it's okay. Being able to donate is such a small part of what we need. What we need is we need awareness. What we need is we need to reach as many eyes and as many ears as we possibly can, because then we're going to reach the people with those deeper pockets. You know the more awareness we work to raise. Okay, so. We have enough iron blocks. I'm so sorry to hear that, Corey. And that's the thing that kills me the most about it, you know, is, is everybody's got that cancer story, you know? Everybody does. And I hate that everybody has that cancer story. I don't want people to have a cancer story anymore. You know? I don't want people... I don't want people to have to have those cancer stories anymore. Okay. We can do seven iron golems. Technically eight if I wanted to break, bring, you know, more of that, but that's fine. We don't need to worry about that much. Uh, if we can't do it with, with seven, eight's not going to make the difference, okay? So, I need to be smart, and I need to actually do these right. Uh, Paul Prezula, if you're still in the chat... <laughs> My, my shears are called the Manscaper in honor of you guys. Okay, and then we just need seven jack-o'-lanterns. Booyakasha. Zombie, I don't know where you are, but shut your face! I don't know. I don't think that these golems will die in the initial explosion caused by the wither. I wouldn't think so. But then again, I am not a smart man sometimes.
This could be the series, folks. This could be absolutely every bit of the series. Right here. Coming up in just a moment here. As soon as I dig out a big enough safe space here. Now, I am going to hang back at a safe distance. Uh, scroll up in the chat, Brad. Scroll up in the chat. That's <sighs> Bradley. Bradley, Bradley, Bradley. The biggest fear that I have is that he could escape into a cave system that he could obliterate absolutely every one of these golems somehow. That's right, I forgot VIPs had that power. That's such a dangerous power to give Christiani. I'm um, trying to axe apart blocks. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> I'll show myself out now. We are gonna punch you in your stupid weather face. Me and all my golem friends. Do, 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 do. Okay. Look at this garbage deep slate again. Regular deep slate. If you're not familiar with Minecraft, regular deep slate, you can't really do anything with it except build with it. Uh, but if you break it with a regular pickaxe, not a silk touch, then you get cobbled deep slate, which is much more useful in building. Um. Oh, don't be... No, 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 no. Stop it. Get out of the wall. Uh, holy cow, golems are so finicky. Okay, fine. Nick summons in uh, Iron Golems to help fight the Wither Boss. Immediately, almost um, kills it. Get excuse, hello, sir. Why are you the way that you are? You are a thief of joy. Uh, that's wall six, iron golems zero, if anybody's keeping score. All right. I need milk on the hot bar. Health potions. Oh, I forgot it's going to be spooky, scary, dark down here. Much darkness. <laughs> Stupid Toby. Somebody's picking up what I'm putting down. E wow, 83% of you have that much faith in me, huh? Okay. Let's see how right you are. Let's see how right you are. Let's do this. I want the golems to just spank it, like, instantly. I can't see anything. Oh boy. Ooh, I didn't bring a smite axe. Oh, there's the totem. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. That was the totem that saved me there. He's still alive, though. 
He's still alive. We're gonna go punch him in the face again. Oh, in your face. Suck it. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yes. Woo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that nether star. Look at it. Look at it. You can't see it there. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> Beat his face in. Uh, the golems. The, the golems helped. Uh, well, a little. They helped a little. Like, listen, this is Java Edition, and I know you can easily cheese the Java Wither, okay? Um, it happens. It is what it is. Just accept it. You know, it is what it is. Uh, wow, it's a golem graveyard back here. Uh, I want these Wither Roses, too, please and thanks. No, there we go. Yeah, I want it, I want those Wither Roses as well. Ooh, hey, hey, guy. Hey. Hey. Yeah, that'll learn you. Jerk. <laughs> yeah, you can so easily cheese the wither in Bedrock Edition. I mean, it just is what it is. But I mean, he did... Like, I was just kind of like... I knew I had the totems. Like, I wasn't worried about it. Like, I was just like, yeah, let's just go in there and just smash his face. Oh, hello. Yes, we'll, we'll take gold. Yeet. What the... Yeet. There we go. Gold acquired. <gasps> oh, his head. We got to take his head. We got to have his head. I don't want poppies. Oh, baby. What the? Oh, yeah. Man, he was close to getting back into this mine shaft, too. See, the good thing is the golems got him down to that point where he's melee only. And then he tends to stay way closer to the ground. So there it is. $252 donated for every single day that I have survived in this hardcore Minecraft world. 252 days survived without a single death. We've smashed the wither. We've almost conquered a bastion remnant. We conquered a woodland mansion. We destroyed the ender dragon. 252 days which brings our total to just we're literally a dollar and 34 cents shy of $2,500 for a future immune to cancer I promised it one dollar per day there it is day 252 man that felt good man that felt good